The thief arrived at the crippled barrack within the hour. As he entered Barso's hovel, he was greeted by a very flustered Orion. The thief silently crept up on the middle-aged man, rage blazing within his eyes. He had quite a few questions for this, so-called, savior of the people. Looking for something? Garrett's sly voice caught the intruder off guard. Orion jumped, grasping at his chest. <coughs> oh. It's just you. He managed the weak smile. The thief was far from amused. Just me, eh? <laughs> he feigned a low chuckle. Where's Bass, Orion? I, I don't know. I just got here. I came looking for that book you stole for me last week. <laughs> I see. As Orion began to relax a bit, Garrett suddenly rushed forward. Taking his left hand, he grabbed Orion by the shirt, pulling free and positioning his dagger in the right. His usually placid personality had taken a dramatic shift. Orion began to pant, as the blade edged ever closer to his throat. Cut the crap, Orion. I want to know where my friend is, and I want to know now. Gagarib. I really have no- A slight pinprick from the sharp dagger silenced him. Garrett's eyes were blazing with firm intent. I have a policy against killing, but I don't need to kill you to make you talk, Orion. So what's it gonna be? I- I'll talk. The watch came. They took Basso, all right? Not good enough. Garrett growled through his teeth, scrunching up the base of Orion's shirt collar, his knuckles turning white. What the hell were you doing yesterday night with Helena? I... I was just dropping off some things she ordered. That's all. The thief edged the blade closer to Orion's neck. He yelped as a thin trickle of blood kissed the tip. Garrett's grip tightened, making breathing difficult. <laughs> For someone who claims they want to clean up this city, you're sure full of shit. The thief sneered. I heard everything. What's she planning? I honestly don't know, alright? All I can say, is that it involves ancient relics, and the primal stone. What of Basso? Where was he taken? Prison? Or the Baron's Keep? The Keep, the Keep. Now, will you please let me go? Giving him one last grip of agony, Garrett dropped Orion, who collapsed into a trembling heap at his feet. And by the way, I'm nobody's fool. You and your partner would do best to remember that. Garrett entered the musty chamber, the sounds of the starving and tortured prisoners within, burning his eardrums. It wasn't exactly easy to penetrate the place, but he had managed, somehow. The worst of the night's ordeals were over. Or, so he thought. Now, all he had to do was track down the boxman. The thief paced by each cell taking the time to peer between the stale iron bars for his missing friend. He managed to locate Barso at the furthest cell on the left. He was huddled in the corner, looking positively hopeless. Room service. Garrett's dry wit was music to the boxman's ears. He was on his feet instantly, galloping to the door of his primitive cage. <laughs> About time you showed up, he joked. Yeah, thought you'd be used to prison by now. The thief grinned as he fiddled the lock picks between his deft fingers. Within moments, the barred door creaked open. Barso stepped out and popped his lower back. Oh Christ, those rooms are tiny, he groaned. 
Garrett gave him a warm grin. You alright? Yeah, yeah. Sure, I'm fine. Barca responded, as he walked past the thief, although Garrett could see an obvious limp in his left leg. How's, uh, how's Guinevere? She didn't come with you, did she? He looked around warily. I know better than to bring her here. She'd be in too much danger. Huh. Yeah, or more likely, you would be the one in danger, Garrett. Garrett stopped walking and abruptly crossed his arms. You have something to say, Basso. Damn straight I've got something to say. I heard some of them watchdogs talking after they concluded their generous escort to my room. He mused sourly. Apparently Master Simmons has upped her bounty significantly. Garrett ran his thumb over his chin. I see. Barso's jovial disposition suddenly shifted to very serious. He locked eyes with his mate. Garrett, I know we already talked, and I know that you said you were fine. Call me a stubborn arse, but I still think that the gal has to go. Her rich daddy's offering more for her return now than even you could swipe in a year. Do you know how much negative publicity that's bound to get? <laughs> I can imagine. I swipe a lot in a year. Come to think of it, does Lord Simmons even have that much coin? The thief chuckled. Bah so shook his head. <laughs> You're a stubborn one, Garrett. Always have been. And yet you always seem so surprised, Basso. Come on, let's get out of here. The two men navigated through the tight corridors and crannies, until they eventually came to the marked double doors at the back of the Baron's Keep. I can take it from here, Garrett. Thanks a lot. Barso smiled, still limping slightly with every step. Are you sure? The thief asked, concerned. The boxman waved him off. Yeah. You go on ahead and take a gander about the place if you like. He started away. Who knows, you might find something nice for Guinevere. <laughs> he winked. Garrett scoffed watching as his mate scrambled off into the shadows, shaking his head. He reached up to shut the doorway with utmost discretion. A sudden, stinging pressure came down hard upon Garrett's left hand. He pulled back in shock, and gaped when he beheld the large bowl piercing through his glove, burrowing deeply into his flesh. Garrett grunted, feeling as the pain intensified. From around the corner of the dimly lit alleyway, an all too familiar voice taunted him. Breaking your fellow vermin from the rifle cages, eh? Garrett's eyes narrowed as he looked up to meet none other than the sadistic gaze of the thief taker general. You bear a very naughty boy, Master Thief. Garrett fought to hide the stabbing agony as he tore the bolt from his hand. The brave hood wasn't about to scream for this psycho. He turned to flee, but found that his feet remained cemented to the cobblestone. The general began to smile dementedly. We've become such good friends over petty burglaries, haven't we? The general advanced upon his prey, twirling a fat finger around his mustache. Why, and what kind of friend would I be if I didn't get you a little prezzy now and again, eh? After all, would you give me this? Fashionable false leg last year. Desperate to get the hell out of there, Garrett tried once again to dart away into the alley after Barso. He managed a single, heavy step, 
just as a wave of dizziness began to wash over him. The world spun, and he felt like he was going to be ill. The thief taker general smirked in a way that made him feel very uneasy. Do you know how long I've waited for this day? Ever since you took away my dignity that night, you've been nothing but a constant thorn in my side. <sighs> he hissed, leering down at the thief. Garrett smirked weakly. For once, I can't take credit for that theft. What did you just say to me? Scum! The general hoisted him up off the ground by the throat, pressing his body against the brick wall. I... didn't take your dignity from you. You stole it all on your own. Filthy bastard! I'll make you eat those words! <coughs> The general hissed and spat at Garrett. Consider them your last meal, master thief. And with those words, Garrett felt a sharp punch to his stomach. The intense pain, blood loss, and the effects of the drugged bolt caused his head to go spinning again. Within seconds, he was out cold.